Feel free to check out my tea public after the video and support me on Patreon. Watch till the end of the video for more. Special thanks to Patreon supporter The Griff for commissioning this video. To become a patron, click the link in the description. Ever since the airing of Mobile Suit Gundam, numerous shows from the real robot subgenre started popping up, like Macross, Vifom, and Pat Labor, taking the concept of mecha and placing it in much more grounded settings that makes them feel real in a sense. One of these shows is Armored Trooper Vodums from 1983, a show that has a huge following, and as I've noticed in recent years, many have acclaimed it to be possibly the best mecha anime of all time. But does it really deserve that title? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at what makes Armored Trooper Vatums so great. The series was produced by none other than Sunrise, who we have to thank for Mobile Suit Gundam and many other shows. It was created by Ryosuke Takahashi, who is also responsible for Leisner, alongside Tsunehisa Ito, as well as Doug Ram. In Vatums, two nations known as Gilgamesh and Balorant have been engaged in a conflict known as the 100 Years War. A conflict so devastating and drawn out to the point where no one even knows why they even fight anymore. Their means of combat are through the use of mechs known as armored troopers, and their pilots, Vatums, which means vertical one-man tank for offensive maneuvering. It was intentionally made to sound like Bottoms because these people are considered the lowest of the low. The armored troopers were designed by Kunio Okawara, and I have to say, I absolutely adore these mech designs. The scope dog, the rabidly dog, the fatties, they're all just fantastic. The show does a great job hitting home the idea that they're just walking tanks with how small they are, and the fact that they zoom around on the battlefield with tank treads, with all sorts of weapons attached to them. If we ever get to a point in human history where we use giant robots as instruments of war, I can easily imagine them looking like armor troopers to an extent. The show focuses on a single pilot, Kiriko Kuvi of the Red Shoulder Battalion, a very stoic protagonist which wasn't really new at the time, but it's his combat skills and what he has to face and endure are what make him a great character, though I can't help but think he's like an anime version of Ryan Gosling. He starts off the series as just an ordinary soldier, but gets caught in a conspiracy involving his own side as he discovers a secret operation being conducted that deals with the development of perfect soldiers, the first he sees being Fiana, aka Proto-1. Kiriko eventually goes on the run in pursuit of learning everything about this conspiracy he stumbled upon, but along the way he meets Vanilla Varda, Kokona, and Belus Gotho, voiced by the late Kosei Tomita, as they help assist Kiriko in the numerous battles that come his way. And that's another thing about Vodums. The supporting cast is very memorable, as there's also Rushako, who becomes a big supporting character in the second half, Ypsilon, aka Proto-2, who is a rival to Kiriko, and most famously Melkian intelligence officer Jean-Paul Rochelle, China, voiced by the legendary Banjo Ginga. But as the series goes on, the conspiracy Kiriko is trying to unravel becomes even more eerie and results in perhaps the most chilling final arc I've ever experienced with any anime ever. I won't spoil what it is because I really urge everyone to check this out on their own, but all I'll say is that it feels very Kubrick-esque and the twists and turns are very effective in that particular manner. There's even a bigger emphasis on the psychological toll that Kiriko is enduring, making it not only more interesting, but unsettling too. But aside from all that, the action scenes in Vodums are very unique due to how the ATs are established. And this goes into another thing about Vodums. It has the two primary traits of any amazing television series. It never gets boring, and it's incredibly paced. The show can be divided into four different arcs, each standing out on their own, each having 13 episodes. The Uda arc is like Blade Runner meets Gladiator, the Kuman arc is a jungle espionage story, the Sunza arc is like Mad Max with a dash of Star Wars, and the final arc, Quent, is where it gets all 2001 on ya. Not to mention, the opening is really catchy. And boy, he fit! And the outro is really beautiful.
Plus, the scoring by Hiroki Inui complements the action, drama, and suspense very well. There's also a series of OVAs that adapts each of these arcs in about an hour, plus an additional three, The Last Red Shoulder, which takes place before the Kuman arc, The Big Battle, which takes place sometime during the Sunza arc, and the best of these three, Roots of Ambition, set before the events of the anime. The Last Red Shoulder, as already mentioned, takes place between the Udo and Kuman arcs. The anime mentions a battalion of highly trained soldiers known as the Red Shoulders, and this OVA provides some further insight on who they are and Kiriko's involvement in the program. This is also the canonical first appearance of the character Ypsilon, a brother-type character to Fiana and rival to Kiriko. It's also there to add some more closure to the Udo arc, before the story transitions into the Kuman arc, delivering some sweet gladiatorial mecha action, as well as my favorite AT in the series, the Bloodsucker. The big battle is centered around this mentally deranged Valorant soldier named Rada Neva, who would engage in battle with Kiriko. Jeez, what is with this guy? Just look at him. Though, concerning what his name is and how he acts, I wouldn't be surprised if he was voiced by Schnitzel from Chowder. Rada Rada Rada! Rada, rada, rada. And finally, Roots of Ambition. Despite the fact that it spoils one of the anime's big twists, it's overall an incredibly well-made OVA, filled with action, violence, and suspense. It primarily focuses on how Kiriko ended up joining the Red Shoulder program. As for the twists I won't mention, this OVA also provides some further insight into that and adds some more depth to the overall story. This OVA would also go into the 2006 series, The Paleson Files, which is a continuation of Roots of Ambition, where Kiriko is assigned with another team of soldiers as Colonel Yorin Paleson is being court-martialed for his actions involving the Red Shoulder program. The anime also has a follow-up OVA series called Brilliantly Shining Hearsay, which is then followed up by Kiriko's return and and the Phantom Arc, which are the most recent canon outings in the universe. Not to mention, there are a ton of video games that add to the overall lore. While there are a lot of these video games, there's really not much info attached to them, unfortunately. But thanks to MD Chaos on Twitter, I was made aware of Blue Knight Berserga Story on the PlayStation, which is perhaps the most famous of these video games considering how much merchandise it has. And there's also Armored Trooper Vodum's The Battling Road for the Super Famicom and Lightning Slash for the PlayStation. All these games follow a similar format, being third-person shooters where you engage in battle with the enemy forces. Again, there's a lot more, but these seem to be the ones that stand out from the rest when it comes to expanding the lore of the series. Oh, and speaking of merchandise, I really want a remote-controlled scope dog so badly. Overall, Armored Trooper Vodums is absolutely incredible. Amazing characters, outstanding action scenes, great pacing, memorable music, and an unforgettable story that displays the horrors of war in a truly fantastic and unique sci-fi setting, in a way that pays tribute to classic sci-fi in general, as I've already mentioned with the comparisons to Blade Runner 2001 and so forth. Truly one of the major pinnacles of the mecha genre. Vodums is one of those shows where I feel like I can't really do it proper justice with a single review. Like, at first glance it may seem like your typical real robot anime, but that's certainly not the case. It's one of those shows that needs to be seen to be believed. But best mecha anime of all time? I can get on board with that. Now at this point, I would imagine that you're already interested in the series, which is why I would highly recommend picking up the Armored Trooper Vodum's complete collection from Made in Japan, as it contains not only the anime and OVAs, but also Brilliantly Shining Hearsay, as well as the Phantom Arc, uh, Kiriko's Return, and even one-shots like Hey Serving and Vodum's Finder. I mean, look at that. As well as Armored Hunter Mellow. Where is it? It's... It's not here. I can't find it. I can't find it anywhere. Oh god. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Oh. It's on YouTube. You know, I think Mellow Link deserves a video on its own. But that's not all. Did you know that this review was commissioned by one of my fellow patrons? 
If you'd like to commission a review, then go support me on Patreon, where you can also get early access to videos, exclusive content, and a t-shirt of your choice from my tea public, like these designs based on Armor Trooper Vodums. Once I reach enough patrons, I'll review the H-Man, the Secret of Intelligent, and the Human Vapor. So if that's something you'd like to see, then go support me on Patreon. Feel free to like, share, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and this is Titan Goji, signing off.